Well, we're hitting a very important topic today and in the weeks to come, marriage. Whether you are married, you have been married, you might be married, or you know someone who's been married, we've got a bunch of information that we believe God is downloading to you and to all of those you know who are in this situation. I'm thrilled to have David and Tracy Sellers from Vows to Keep joining us as we start a series on marriage. You, when I decided I wanted to have a series on marriage, God just said, you guys are the right people. You're the ones I need to talk to. Before we get into our first topic of boundaries, can you just quickly tell me what is Vows to Keep and what do you do? Sure. Vows to Keep Marriage Ministries is something that we started really out of a calling that we felt God putting in our lives before we were even married. And uh, we were talking about what God was doing, you know, even just a couple of days into really our dating relationship and felt God leading us to do this. And um, Vows to Keep is, is basically a ministry that's all about helping you to apply the Bible to your marriage uh, and, and the hardships that we go through in marriage. It's so exciting to be talking with couples on a weekly basis, just sitting down with them and counseling with them. We also have a radio program on Shine FM in the Bell Fountain and Marysville area, and we're expanding to Lima and beyond, so that's exciting as well. WTTP, is that yes, right? Yes, be right here on WTTV. That's great. Exciting to work with Mike Spalding on that. We do marriage conferences, and we do those around the region. We've actually had one here in Lima before. Just getting couples those big bi biblical building blocks that they can build on, go home, and start applying God's Word to their marriage right then and there. And we also have date nights. We're having a fun one coming up here in just a little bit. Every year we do three specific date nights where we're adding more every year. We do a canoe date, just giving couples time together and so maybe some things to talk about while they float down the Mad River. We also have a ballroom dance date night mm -hmm. and a square dance on New Year's Eve. Lots of fun. All right, that's, our, that's Vows to Keep in a nutshell and you can find out more at VowsToKeep.com. But we're going to talk about some important topics today and in the weeks to come. And we're going to start today by talking about Boundaries. Boundaries in, marriage. boundaries in marriage. Let's go. Boundaries are something that cause most couples, actually most people in general, to panic, right? They don't want to be fenced in. They would really prefer that I have the flexibility to set my own destiny. I want to do what I want to do, when I want to do it, and how I want to do it. And um, I think that when we look at the root of that, in some ways it's actually tied to a sinful nature that we have. We yeah. think we know what's best for us and we'd really rather to be able to set our own course. So I think when we realize um, how quickly we can get off course um, when we actually get a chance to follow through in our own ways, it's, it's eye-opening. It's really easy to convince ourselves that when we live the way we want, that we're gonna have that ultimate freedom. But that's our sinful nature. And when we find ourselves in that position, just doing what we want, with the Bible totally on the side, then we're held within like this grasp of death and it's a spiritual death. And that's the chains that bind. I think about um, you know, Adam and Eve. They really were the first couple to get a boundary. So God says, you, you've got the whole garden, you can have it all. But there's one boundary that I want you to know about here. And, and it's for their ultimate freedom that he actually gives this boundary to them. It's something that he does out of love for them. God's word has a lot of boundaries that are in it, but again, they're all for ultimately our freedom. And it's something that really results in long-term happiness in our marriages when we get a chance to apply what the Bible says. There's a, a boundary example that I would like to, I guess, talk a little bit about. It's just Ephesians uh, 4.27. It says, for when you're angry, you might give a mighty foothold to the devil. Essentially, we, we can very easily let the enemy into um, the, the boundaries of our marriage, into the unity that we work so hard to build, just by being angry and, and letting basically an opportunity mm -hmm. for that unity to be blasted apart through that. Speaking of those words and that tone, Jennifer, when I am in a heated moment with David, that's when I get out of bounds. That's when I get out of God's word and what he tells me to do because I can say things that later on I want to take back. I can say it in a way that's not kind and compassionate like God's word tells me to be. And especially in the area of disrespect, I think women can get out of bounds really quickly because God's word's really clear in Ephesians to be respectful to our husbands so I can cross over that boundary into disrespect. And that's not where I want to be and that doesn't create unity. How do people know where those boundaries are? How do, how do they figure out how to create that? Our society is not teaching us 
where those boundaries are. In many yes. ways, they're teaching us the opposite. Oh, opposite. yeah, absolutely. And we're seeing yeah. disaster after disaster. I think you almost just answered your own question because people are learning, they're letting society teach them, but they need to be taught by God's word. Because if you read through even just the book of Ephesians and how it lays out how we should talk to each other, right then and there, you've mm. got it. You've got your boundaries. And if you stay within those, your marriage is gonna be so blessed. It's there's, amazing. Th th there's a lot of times where you look at, um, you know, some of the boundaries at a very practical level, like our jobs. Um, I think it may be a little bit of a generational thing, but you know, back when my dad was my age, he didn't have a cell phone that kept him connected to his job. When he clocked out and walked away, he, he was done with his job and ultimately, there was a boundary that allowed him to sort of protect in a way the love time and, and the opportunity that he would have with his family. But that's not really the case now for that's most right. of us. We have a cell phone and therefore there's a, a very loose and oftentimes completely missing boundary. But if we look at God's word, Ecclesiastes 3 says, you know, for, every, for everything there's a season, a time for every activity under heaven. And I think it's important that we do our job well, um, but we really have to have a, a drawn a boundary something that we can set before God and say, here's a boundary that I'm, I know honors you, and then I'm going to share that with my wife to help me stay accountable. I'm going to share that with my employer mm -hmm. and say, you know, this, this is something I want, to, I want to please you, uh, but I'm sure you'll respect the fact that I, I need to maintain my family as well. So God's Word is steps. a great source. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. More than just saying, I'm going to do this. Yes finding someone who will keep you accountable or saying, this, this is important, mm -hmm. yep. I'm gonna preserve this time. Yeah, it takes yeah. action behind it. And on the technology note, that's another area, God's word doesn't talk about emails, doesn't talk about Facebook, <laughs> doesn't talk about smartphones, but it does I talk about- I bet it would about, if the Bible was written yes. today. <laughs> <laughs> but it talks about keeping things out in the light, keeping them in the open. And we can do that in that area of technology with our spouse. A lot of people have separate passwords and they're not sure what their husband's is or what their wife's is. But just to be open and honest in your marriage and say, I want you to know, hey, I had to text um, a male teacher today and I just want you to be aware that that text was sent out. And at any time, I want to feel comfortable with you looking at my Facebook page or looking at my email, nothing hidden in the dark. Mm, nothing hidden, so important. That's where the boundaries can, can be broken so quickly. Yes. I always, you know, Satan just needs a crack to start that. And then 20 years later, a couple says, yeah. how did we get here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. Little yeah. by little. <laughs> <laughs> so boundaries are such an important thing. Boundaries though, do you even think that that also is important if you have children? Um, I mean, there's a lot of good things. You can come sure. up with an excuse. Well, I'm just going to my kid's sporting event, or I'm just yes. involved in my church mm -hmm. activity, or I'm just helping out at the soup kitchen thing. That's right, yeah. Time is, is actually one of those things that if you look at, mm -hmm. um, you know, we, we have to actually put some boundaries around our mm -hmm. time because um, it's very easy to get totally out of whack um, and, and think you've got the right priorities. Uh, I, I oftentimes, as I work with guys, I would say, okay, let's write down what we did yesterday. Let's write down what we did the day before and let's kind of break those into categories and then look to see, do, do our priorities actually reflect how we spent our time? Mm -hmm. uh, so it is very true. We can, get, we can easily get to the point in which we're passionately pursuing things that, um, that really aren't what would protect our marriage and our family ultimately. Mm -hmm. The Bible tells us to number our days, to realize our time is short and to spend them well. And speaking of spending, Finances are another huge area of boundaries that couples can find themselves out of bounds. When a couple has separate finances, right there, the line has already been drawn. Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I would just encourage listeners and viewers to combine their checking accounts and be united in that. But then as you are, sit down and have that conversation with your spouse. If I'm out shopping and I see something that's $50, should I give you a call? Like what's kind of the spending limit? Are we gonna accept those credit cards that are offered to us everywhere we go? Or are we gonna have no credit cards? And how can we honor God with our finances? Some incredible uh, tips from David and Tracy Sellers of Vows to Keep. We're talking about boundaries in marriage. Everything from things that you would probably think about biblically, but practical things, finances, sending text messages, all of these little things that could create problems. When you can create the proper boundaries, then you can prevent those problems and God can fulfill more things in your marriage. This is just part of our ongoing conversation with David and Tracy. Of course, you can go to their website, vows2keep.com, to find out more about all of the services that they offer. Their heart is to restore marriages 
even if it is yours. Their heart is to see God supreme in every marriage there is.